Ja, keine Ahnung, warum du einen Film machst, sondern es ist der Platz auf dem Internet, wo wir weiter grinden, aber dieses Mal mit Precision. Das ist eine gute Idee. Das ist der the, the kind of DGB Full Race Job. Last time, um, kind of we we measured um, this the kind of the primary bore um, to try and get it to try and ascertain, you know, if it was kind of up to up to snuff, up to measure, um, and so we. I mean, and obviously, I got my my dial bore gauge here. You know, we we trying to we trying to do some precision work here, and now as you can see, this thing is. Let me see if you can see it there on there. So now I've got it dialed in absolutely. Um, so now the, the the work on the on the, on the, if you want the primary side, it's been finished. So how did I do this? Okay, well it's very simple. I got myself um, a Dremel and with silk and glove, yeah, like really gently without applying a lot of force. I, I I polished the top of here and only the top because remember as you went through the bore it was 32 mil and it was okay it's just the top of the bore that needed minimal minimal kind of grinding I mean this took me like minutes 10 minutes yeah so so, so that's it and, and that's the beauty of having of having measurements isn't it because obviously this gives you an idea okay exactly how much material do I have to remove in which case in this case it wasn't that much to be honest but hey we had to do it we've done it it's done um, so now what we need to do is we need to progress uh, onto the secondary so we are going to do kind of the same job so I'm going to kind of set up the um, um, the dial bore gauge for 36 mil rather than whatever it is at the moment obviously uh, I'll show you I'll show you what that looks like uh, see if it's if it's bang on 36 fine no problem I don't have to do anything else um, and if not we we're, we're gonna try to correct this side as well and also what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of um we're gonna kind of get this hole to be you know a bit uh, larger uh, so that we can get we can start getting this carp to flow you know a bit more adequately and I'll show you how that is done as well because I've got some I've got like a, like a special technique and some tools that I developed kind of in the course of having done this job previously so hang on to your seats and uh, let's get this uh, let's get this episode um, rolling okay so I've got <clears throat> the unit dialed in now um, and obviously I had to well, clearly set up the micrometer for 36 mil exactly and then I had to kind of zero my dial bore gauge again with a new measurement so all of that stuff I've done you know off camera but so now let's do let's try and do some measurement and generally what you need to do Okay, so okay, so it 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 looks like if you see this when it kind of changes direction. Let me do it there, there. So it seems like, and also if I go down, it's it it kind of goes slightly over thirty six mil. And if I go up, it goes slightly smaller than 36 mil. Kind of the same situation that, that we had on the primaries. So let's have a look. Yeah, so basically up to the height of the, I would say there about half of the, um, the top half of the throttle shaft is fine. But as you go up a bit, it tends to go but micrometrically even a bit less than the primary this one you obviously have to take a measurement on the other side just to make sure that it isn't out of round uh, let's have a look
Yeah, so it is it is kind of the same situation. The 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 deeper I go into the into the bore, kind of the 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 larger it is again micrometrically and the higher I go kind of the 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 smaller it is. I mean there's kind of it's like really point point one of a millimeter here. So I think what we what we need to do is we need to do the exact same thing uh, that we've done on the on the, on the, on the primary side um, again exceedingly carefully because 0.1 of a millimeter is nothing really um, so you do need to be a little bit careful but at least now we've measured it and we know um, kind of what we're working with and what's the kind of the amount of material that we need to take off yeah because that's important to know um, again good to have the precision instruments to to make it right so let's try and uh, do the um kind of the polishing so that now that we've got all the all the measurements right and then we'll do the cut on the on the on the secondary and boof, we might be able to start with to start the reassembly process over ah, obviously i need to clean it up mm, damn it okay fine but because one of the things that I probably didn't explain is after I do all the all the work in terms of kind of polishing here, uh, cutting in here, I just need to put it again on the ultrasonic cleaner um, just to give it like one final clean proper before assembly so that this is absolutely, you know, you could eat your lunch, you can, you, can, you should be able to uh, lick it. Um, that, that's the level of cleanliness uh, that it should have. And also, um, when, when you do all this grinding and polishing and whatnot, um, there's always like little residue and little kind of bits that might go into the passages. So it's always useful. So it's always good to, you know, give it a good clean afterwards. So this side needed a little bit more work, but I think we are now kind of, there we go, in a, in a much better place than what we were before. There we go, um, and again, it's 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 a bit more kind of in the round now. The only problem is that sometimes you need to be careful, kind of that you don't go over because clearly, kind of going over is not necessarily uh, kind of what we what we want to hear, uh, and therefore you do need to be a little bit careful. Uh, kind of with that because you don't want to you don't want to have like an illegal uh, kind of carburetor uh, in the race series and, and then the customer gets eliminated um, that's not what we're on about here we're, we're on about kind of making the most uh, of the carburetor that we can but has to be within the rules so I think um, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of leave it here um, and then you know we just yeah just leave it here uh, and then the customer uh, will be able to have a good car to you know go around the track okay so here's the setup to make the cut now as you may have noticed I put this on a on an aluminium base and I clamped it like this because that allows me uh, to clamp the piece better as you can see there I've, I've, I've centered the piece and also done this um, centered this with the with the bore so that you know everything checks out fine um, so those are the things that you need to that you need to, to kind of be careful of when you're doing this sort of thing and also that this thing is yeah yeah it's fine um, if kind of on a, on a kind of XY basis um, so that you make a straight cut okay so now we have done a ton of work on on on, on this unit so i need to kind of bring you up to date with all the details um so far uh, on this car and one very important thing that is going to be specific to this build that might not be applicable for others so let, let, let me bring you closer and i'll explain and i explain a bit what i'm on about as you, as you can see now, 
uh, I've kind of enlarged quite a bit the hole um, in here. I had a bit of an accident with the um, uh, with the um, with, with the drill bit. It it like literally came off. Uh, the taper destroyed my taper, and so, so I had to buy a new one. Anyway, any anyway, the hole is enlarged as you can see. There is quite a difference uh, between those two holes. Let me do it like that, and let's look at it. What's what, what it looks like from the other side. So, if you look if you look here, this is where the greatest kind of increases in flow um, are going to be because as you can see um let me try and hold it like like that there we go so in here you can see very clearly that uh let's say the um, i've i've put a much much lower profile screws in here and i've done as you can see i cut a little bit of a groove here just to make it that little bit slimmer and and the and the screws don't protrude very much kind of round here so that's all good and here look you haven't got nearly nothing on this side and a very little very very little restriction on this side so really that's um, pretty much without cutting the shafts that's as much flow as you're gonna get through them and here you can see the difference between the Venturis this one has been enlarged this one this one hasn't they were more or less the same size now this one is much larger so it's just that obviously check for return oh yeah beautiful so that's good that's all good so there is one little thing that I need to um remark on this and it's why have i not made a hole here so generally speaking in 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 engines that had kind of a very lumpy kind of radical camshaft um, you generally sometimes have to do a hole in the primary um, um throttle uh, plate because uh, sometimes the engine might struggle to get sufficient air to idle well and that's why sometimes a hole a hole is called for now what why have I not done one here it's because I already have a hole of sorts due to the way that we are going to configure this car so Here's, here's, where, here's where the detail comes in. So I don't know if you remember uh, in the previous um, kind of episode, I remarked on the fact that we didn't have kind of like the diaphragm for the power valve. Yeah. Now, where does the diaphragm from the power valve get the vacuum to, to actuate it? Well, it comes from here all the way to here. And if we put this kind of as it goes like so, you can see that it 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 marries up to this passage here, and this passage here basically goes there. Yeah. So what's going on here? So this is kind of connected to the manifold vacuum vacuum. Yeah. So therefore, by leaving this open like this, I am going to be generating an air leak the size the size of, of, of this yeah so what happens we're gonna try and run the carb as it is with this like so and you can what you can do is you can regulate the um the vacuum uh, kind of leak this is this is gonna essentially become your idle bypass so you either drill this out if it needs more air or you put a restriction here so it could be like a, i don't know like a like a very small um drill bit for example or it could be just like a piece of wire that you put in there and that's going to generate a restriction and essentially it's going to let you play around with the with the idle which is quite important um and um, in a minute, I'm going to show you kind of a couple more things once I start kind of building the unit up. So before I kind of put the top on, on this unit, I want to show you kind of another thing that, I, that, that I've done. Again, 
detail, 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 detail. Uh, when, when you're working with a unit like this for this particular purpose, so I'll show you a bit a bit closer what I what I wanted to achieve and what I what I would have done uh, had I had more time. Okay, so hopefully you can you can see it you you, you can see it here. These are the uh, the auxiliary venturis, and I don't know if you notice, but here and here, I have done a little bit of kind of filing out of, of this bit to make it kind of less restrictive. Um, so ideally, one of the things that I would have done have I had more time would have been somehow welding this bit here and here and there and then cutting this off completely to arrive at something similar to what Holleys have, yeah. So this would be. So imagine, kind of, imagine that he had something here. This would all be milled off. But the key is how do you attach the auxiliary venturi here? Because here's the thing with these carbs that this it's what keeps the tension here, so that that you don't get leaks. So this this bit is important, unless you can do a kind of very very delicate welding here and there. But anyway, in the meantime, what I've done is I've I've, I've put this thing on a diet, uh, and kind of a little bit more air is gonna be able to get through there. So because that's the important thing. Alrighty, so we got to the to the end of 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 the, of the project, and now we got uh, here this. Uh, this unit that is ready to um, hit the track um, and obviously I'll, sh I'll show you what it looks like kind of from, from this side obviously I put the top on everything everything is you know everything's golden ready to go this is what, what we're looking at uh, this is kind of the business end um, so obviously at the top there isn't that much of a of a restriction it's only when you get to the chokes which obviously a secondary has been enlarged quite a lot and the throttle and on, and on this side we worked quite a lot on the throttles to make them you know as, as thin as we did um, but anyway so obviously I'm sending the, the jets back to the customer so that for added tunability and I'm going to chuck in um, another emulsion tube just just so that it can be you know they want to play about with it with the tune but basically this is this is nice and ready to go so i hope you um, if you've been following the series that you kind of got something out of it uh, something um useful um one of the things that that that, that i'm going to finish by by reflecting is on the fact that uh, we did have a look at the rules because initially what I wanted to do was put one of these so this is uh this is the trumpet for our for our weather DCNF and actually uh, kind of it would have fit I would have I could have could have made it fit but the class rules specifically said that you're not allowed to do that bummer because because this one because if we if we would have been able to do this that would have been an absolute winner uh, but anyway it is what it is kind of we couldn't do it so it's fine but if you're not restricted by your category I would say definitely you need to consider uh, one of these or something similar to this you know it doesn't have to be this but you know something that it that orders the airflow into the carb that would have been nice but anyway it wasn't to be uh, but so I want to say thank you very much for watching this episode and I'll see you in the next episode